So any experience as a human being, any experience is, any moment of experience we could say, is felt, is experienced as pleasant or unpleasant or somewhere in between, neither pleasant nor unpleasant, sometimes what people call neutral. Any moment of experience, any moment of conscious experience. Um, We might hear that and say, okay, kind of, so what? But there's actually a lot wrapped up at just that simple level of our experience and what we do with that. So typical reactions to those three, when something is pleasant, we grasp, we cling, we contract around it, we want more. When something is unpleasant, we reject, we're aversive, we try and push it away, we don't like, we try to get rid of. Either one is a struggle. It's a struggle, it's a tussle with experience. When something is kind of in between, it tends to, not always, but sometimes not have enough in it to be of interest to the self. And so we kind of space out or get bored or disinterested. So these are what we could call typical unconscious reactions that go on all the time, all day long, very moment to moment. <clears throat> and it's important to see that this reactivity, trying to hang on, trying to pull towards me, trying to push away, etc., that's, that's what I'm calling reactivity at a very basic level, a very, a very fundamental level, reactivity. With that reactivity comes suffering. That reactivity itself is a state of suffering. So it might be very, very subtle suffering. It could be quite gross. The reactivity is so strong that it's quite gross. But that's important to get clear, that actually that is where the most of the suffering is, is in the reactivity. We need to be absolutely crystal clear about that by seeing it over and over and over and over. In the practice with the space of awareness, the, 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 the expansive space of awareness, and I think I touched on this last night, Partly what we're doing in that is we're using different approaches and different kind of suggestions and ways of looking to actually quieten the reactivity, quieten this pushing away and pulling. I actually haven't said so much that way, but that's been in there. Quieting the reactivity. And what happens when the reactivity quietens? Well, the suffering quietens. Reactivity down, suffering down. Reactivity up, suffering up. Really important to see this. Uh, There are other effects too. Reactivity goes down also as a side effect, not really, but the the kind of the sense of the space gets uh, stronger in a way, more palpable. More the space becomes more prominent than it otherwise, more sort of sensible than otherwise. So reactivity less, suffering less, space more. As I've been saying in the talks, everything works both ways. Space more, reactivity less, suffering less. Do you see how all this is? Yeah. So, what, what do we take from that? The thing in itself, the experience in itself, is not a problem in itself. That's not where the suffering is. The suffering is in the reactivity. And so in Dharma language we say, it's empty of being inherently a problem this pain, this whatever it is, unpleasant sound, whatever it is. It's empty of inherently being a problem. And we don't just need to see that once, we need to see it many, many times. But also in this space of awareness practice, we see other things too. We see, and I touched on this last night again, reactivity less, what else? Self less. Self Reactivity quietens, self quietens. And not only that, Reactivity quietens, solidity gets less. And some of you have been reporting this, and you might have, if you haven't noticed it, you might think, oh yeah, that's true. Or, or perhaps to gently, without putting any pressure on, look for that. Reactivity less, a whole bunch of other stuff less. Self less, solidity less. Perceived solidity. So all that, I'm moving through this quite quickly, but all that says, implies a lot about suffering and where suffering comes from, which is the Buddha's fundamental question. 
So it implies a lot about suffering, but also implies a lot about so-called reality of self and solidity, etc. And so we're looking into the dependent arising of all this. It's dependent on uh, reactivity, etc., and different views. And I'll go into this tonight in, in uh, expand it in, in more depth. In the breath meditation, we've got a slightly different, or actually, well, a different orientation to this pleasant, unpleasant, etc. And we're actually interested, very deliberately interested, in developing the pleasant as a resource. Developing pleasant feeling in the body as a resource. Now that also, later on, as one really develops this breath meditation and the pleasantness, uh, that also becomes part of understanding this dependent arising business, eventually. But first things first. And so this comfort or ease or whatever degree, however unremarkable it might be, of some comfort, some ease, somewhere in the body, we're tending to that. We're uh, nurturing it and nourishing it just as best as we can, finding ways to do that. Now, it's not always there, and it's certainly not always remarkable. You know, sometimes it's a very, mo- very modest feeling. Um, but we're take- the, in, in the breath practice, the emphasis is really, is really on that and taking care of it and finding ways to nourish it. And that can be through the breath, or it can be actually whatever, whatever ways one's... one's finds to to tend to that feeling could be actually quite arranged that's where the play comes in so it turns out there's actually lots of ways of doing it you might find your own little tricks and if we had a much longer retreat I would be suggesting all kinds of things but not to get too tight around this it can't be there all the time and I for one you know, have sat through in the beginning years of my practice years and years of, of pain and, and quite excruciating endlessly sitting after sitting of difficulty, and that eventually, eventually, we can all find ways of working to move the bodily uh, experience towards more pleasure, more comfort, more ease, and then develop that and develop it. Now, if some of that's been around over the days, a little, a little bit of comfort, a little bit of ease, a bit more, a bit less, different parts of the body, etc., you may also notice, you may have noticed it already on the retreat, or you may notice this if you pursue this kind of practice in time, that it will have, how can we put it, different colors or flavors at different times, this comfortable feeling, this easeful feeling. And they're kind of available to us. So sometimes it can feel just like a calmness in the body. Sometimes it can feel like there's a refreshing quality Someone was saying about the delicious breath. Uh, it can feel like there's a tenderness that's pervading the body, uh, or in some part of the body. Could feel like joy is kind of welling up. Uh, can feel bubbly. The, the pleasure in the body feels kind of bubbly. Um, can feel like waves of pleasure. Could feel even ecstatic. You know, all, all is, could feel just quietly peaceful pervading the body or in some part of the body could feel like a stillness again in some part or the whole body all of that and more and you may have noticed if any of that is happening even just a little bit that there may be there can be a kind of gravitation towards one or other of those flavors or colors like we might find ourselves I keep going back to a kind of calmness or I keep going back to whatever I want to throw in something at this point in the retreat which is to do with this is not to neglect even now the long breath um, how do, how do put this? we're interested in deepening calm but we're also interested in invigorating the whole energy level of the, of the body and those two deepen together calm and energy together uh, we don't want that to be out of balance so if I'm too calm and not enough energy it becomes a bit sluggish if I'm too energized and not calm enough, it becomes agitated. So just on the whole, we want to balance this. And it can be sometimes that people neglect the long breath and the way that can energize things. So just to not forget to play also with the long breath still at this point. If this was a longer retreat, if this was, say, two weeks or a month, I just want to put something out because it might be interesting. 
Actually, we would really emphasize a particular color of, of the comfortable feeling and kind of developing that. And that is what the Buddha calls piti uh, in Pali, the original language of the discourses, P-I-T-I. What is PT? Well, it's actually basically, you could say, it's any pleasant feeling that arises from meditation. So in a way it includes all of what I've just talked about, but it's a particular sort of range of colors which tend to be more uh, more of the energized feeling, a bit more bubbly, wavy, sort of um, tingly, uh, lightness, etc. And we would, in the context of a longer retreat, on this retreat it's all fine, any comfortable feeling, great, just, just tend to it and enjoy it. In a long retreat, would actually emphasize that side of things, that uh, range of things, uh, first. So whatever experience you're having, even if you're having a lot of stillness, etc., there would be an encouragement to, to find a way to develop that. What, what are the boundaries? Actually, there are no real boundaries between, when I say, a comfortable feeling and an easeful feeling and PT. You can't kind of draw a line there and say, that's PT and that's just a comfortable feeling. It's a, it's a spectrum. And in a way, it doesn't matter. It's completely irrelevant. So sometimes people get into this thing, you hear a word like PT or jhana, which I'm not going to use on this retreat, and people say, have I got it? Is this it? Well, it, it's not anything different than just the, the easeful, comfortable feeling that's there at times that we're finding a way to work with. So if it starts as a very modest, easeful, comfortable feeling, which it, it evolves gradually, and we're very gradually, without pressuring anything, just tending to that, and it will grow, it will grow. And that's the direction we're moving in. Other people have a different, a different experience, which is nothing seems to be happening very much at all, maybe a little bit occasionally, and then, boom, an explosion of kind of uh, quite extreme uh, you know, bliss or PT or whatever, it doesn't matter either way. It doesn't matter. Mo- I don't, I'm not sure statistically. Maybe most people go the gradual way, I think. Sometimes when the PT is very strong, or even when it's not that strong, because it's unfamiliar, and we're losing our familiar sense of the body, it, uh, fear can come up. That's very normal. It's very normal. Um, and in a way, we're just getting familiar with a different tone in the body. Instead of the body feeling uncomfortable or just kind of normal, we're we're developing something different and getting familiar with that. And in the end, there's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear with this at all. No, no, nothing whatsoever with this kind of practice. It's very healing and a very natural and healthy way for the consciousness and the bodily experience to deepen. So what to do with this comfortable feeling or PT or, or whatever? To enjoy it, to in a way prioritize enjoying it. Sometimes we don't, sometimes we kind of hold back. So sometimes just to check, am I actually letting myself fully enjoy this? And if it's relatively strong, actually um, opening to it, making sure that I'm opening to it inside. It's like I'm opening the channels inside or I'm, I'm letting it wash over me. I'm receiving it, really experimenting with that kind of way of relating to it. Uh, you could also just kind of feel like you're, you're kind of just getting into it, you're really rubbing your nose into it or exploring it. Not putting pressure on the comfortable feeling, just however it is, just that, that's fine, that's great, being content with that. But eventually actually being interested, is it possible that say it's just in my belly, it just feels it just feels nice and warm and relaxed there. Is it possible that that nice, warm, relaxed feeling can actually begin to spread and eventually cover the whole body? So there is, there is a direction that we're moving in without putting pressure on. The intensity of the feeling is not important. Okay, so I don't know how, where this is landing. Again, whenever I talk, I feel it lands in very different places, and that's fine. But not to get hung up on the intensity. In other words, someone may have bliss you know, completely pouring out of their body. Great. Someone else, or the same person at a different time, more usually the same person at a different time, it's just, it's just very unremarkable. It's just a very quiet, modest feeling of well-being. That's actually not so important. In the end... Uh, with these practices, this breath practice, what ends up being more important is two things, the steadiness of the feeling, 
can I actually keep it around if it's comfortable? Can I keep it around you know, for minutes or longer? Uh, and spreading it in the body, eventually spreading it in the body. It's much more important than the intensity. And so how, how do I do that? I might, it might be that I feel that the comfortable feeling is kind of mixing with the breath, the easeful feeling is mixing with the breath, and I'm deliberately doing that, kind of massaging it through the body with the breath energy. It might be at times that I feel it's actually best to leave the breath, the in and out breath, and just leave that and just be with this uh, easeful, pleasant, comfortable feeling and just enjoying that. Other times it's almost like the, the breath coming in and out, the breath energy is kind of, is, as I said, tending to it, is supporting this feeling of comfort. And sometimes a person asks, and, and they're already on this retreat, <clears throat> won't I get attached to this pleasure? Um, I, hope, I hope you do. Uh, we often hear that in, in the teachings, that you know, you'll get attached, don't play with that, it's a distraction, it won't lead to insight, blah, blah, blah. Um, it tends to be that we get attached to this kind of thing if there's not enough of it. If it's a one-off kind of explosion of something, you think, what on earth was that? You have no context, and you don't know how you got it, or it just came out of nowhere, and then the next sort of 500 meditations are spent trying to get it back. But if there becomes slowly a sense of learning how to develop it and move in and out and you see it comes and it goes and sometimes you can get it and sometimes you can't and you, you develop a little skill with it gradually, gradually. When, when there's sort of enough of it, um, it, it doesn't become a problem in terms of attachment. The Buddha actually really encouraged this a lot to develop that sense of meditative well-being in the body and then in the heart and the mind. And encouraged it, as I was saying, I think, in one of the talks, as a resource, as a really deep resource for consciousness. And also, over time, it matures. It matures. I'm talking quite a lot of time. It it matures into uh, deeper and deeper resources. And, again, I think I mentioned this in the opening talk, Having a sense of well-being, no, no matter how remarkable in the, in the body, having access to that regularly, developing a kind of accessibility to that, helps us let go of the less helpful attachments in life, of which we have many, 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 many. And they're not really helping us. And having a, a sort of ref, a, a reservoir, a stance from which I can let go of those makes all the difference. As the Buddha said about this, about this comfortable feeling, about pleasure, he said, this pleasure is not to be feared. This pleasure is to be developed because this pleasure, this attachment, leads to Nibbana, unlike other attachments. And one of my teachers said to me, get attached, Rob, get attached. But we have to have a mature relationship with this. Our relationship with it has to be mature. We have to bring, like I said in one of the talks, we have to bring wisdom into all practice. So what is it to have a mature relationship with a nice feeling in the body, with a degree of comfort, with a degree of the sense of possibility? Practice, like I said at some point, has waves. That's its nature. That's the nature of all things, to have waves. Can we really expect those waves and be okay with them? Totally okay. It's fine when it's not there lovely when it's there and it's fine when it's not there and I expect it to go away and I'm learning something in the movement I'm not just getting elated and depressed I'm learning something so not to make demands and sit down I must have X I must get back to the lovely meditation I had at, at uh, you know 11 o'clock yesterday uh, that's a demand with a specific image I tell you something though eventually It is possible to sit down and just say PT, and there it comes, feeling of bliss. It is possible to actually sit down and just say deep peacefulness, there it comes. Sit down, just say joy, there it comes. That takes a lot of practice, but it's absolutely possible. Absolutely possible. Uh, But we're not, at this point, making specific demands at all. It's rather that we're having this movement of a direction. We're, We're tending to however we feel, even if we feel uncomfortable, okay, can I somehow work with it that it just becomes a bit more comfortable? Or if it's comfortable, great, can I keep it and perhaps make it even a bit more or spread it, etc. So it's a, it's a direction rather than a demand.
There's one more piece I'll just throw it in. It might seem a little strange right now, I'm not sure. But this business about pleasant, unpleasant, etc., eventually what happens with all these different practices, eventually one sees that the experience of pleasant and unpleasant is always, always what we call a dependent arising. And that means that it's empty. It means it's not, this thing is not inherently, the body is not inherently pleasant or unpleasant. And I can learn to see it that way as not not inherently this or that and learn to play with it. And eventually it comes to the point where I can look at something unpleasant and decide to see it as pleasant. Not completely in my life. I look at something that feels unpleasant and I, I'm talking about body pain. And I just see it as pleasant. I think It's like magic. And in a way it is, but actually it's to do with deep understanding of dependent arising. Maybe for later, but I'll just say it now. So, a lot of information. I hope it's not too much, but there, there is, there's something here for, for everyone, and I, I hope.